Hey all, welcome back to Your365 Coach. And today, we're gonna to be checking out Microsoft Lists and how it can integrate inside the Microsoft Teams. So imagine being able to track data, like project lists, tasks, or more, without having to leave the Microsoft Teams app all stored in one place. And in today's video, we're gonna be showing you how exactly you can achieve that, without creating a brand new list inside of Microsoft Teams, you can begin creating that data I'm even going to show you how to add additional columns so you can add more information relevant to your requirements. Maybe you already have a SharePoint list. You'd like to bring that through into Microsoft Teams. Again, I'm going to show you how to do that very quickly so you can bring that existing data into Teams and have that single view of the world. Before we dive in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to find more great content like this every single week to help you become a productivity superstar. Anyway, Let's head into Microsoft Teams and get started. So here I am inside of the Teams desktop app and to create a list inside of this team, we have to go up to the top and click on add a tab inside of the channel that you'd like to create that for. For example, I'm working here in web and social trends. So a table or a list actually covering off that topic could be pretty handy. So let's go ahead and click on the plus icon. Now once I do that, I can then find the Lists app. Now I actually already have it available because I've used it quite recently. If you can't see the Lists app though, just type in search for apps and type in the word Lists. You'll then see at the top, we can select the Lists app and this is Microsoft Lists. So let's click into that and you'll now see a prompt to add this as a tab in the team. Go ahead and click on Save. Now we haven't actually created any list yet. In fact, that just allows us now to select effectively a list that already exists on a SharePoint site or create ourselves a brand new list. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new list by selecting create a list. Now in here, you have a few options. You can optionally take a existing list that you have access to and copy the structure by selecting from existing list. If you have some data in Excel or a CSV file, again, you can import that into lists and have it pre-build all of the structure for you based upon the columns of data in that Excel spreadsheet. And you also have the option to create a list from a Microsoft generated template. Pretty helpful, although pretty limited. As we can see, there's not many templates and none of these particularly meet my requirement. But as an example, if I clicked on the content scheduler to show you this as an example in a template, you can see if I selected use template, what it would create for me. It won't create the actual rows of data, but it will create the structure so the columns being content title, description, author, and so forth will be created for me from that template. But once again, that's not gonna meet our requirements. So we're gonna click on the cancel button here, go back to create a list, and I wanna create a blank list. By clicking blank list, I can now give it a name, a description, which we'll input into now. And once we've done that, we can now set a small color icon and also choose a little icon to go with this as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use a default spin selected and then click on the create button. Now in doing so, this will go ahead and create us that brand new Microsoft list embedded in the team that we're working in. So me and my colleagues will be able to immediately access this list of data. Though the problem Unfortunately, as we can see here, is there's only actually one column we can use, that being title. If we click on the new button, we'll actually see that I could give it a title and add an attachment, but sadly, that's about it. Now, as amazing as it would be to have web and social trends with just that one single column completed, that's not really gonna be viable for all the types of lists that you're gonna work with. So let's fix that and firstly correct the title column. And that would be useful to actually have it renamed for a different purpose. I'm gonna go ahead and select a trend name. So rather than we create a brand new column, I can click in the drop down for title and I can go to column settings and I can select rename. Now here, I'm gonna go ahead and add the trend name as the column. So that means when we are filling in this, rather than title, we'll see trend name. Next up, I've got the category, whether it's web or social. So here, I'm gonna add a column. Now I could have it as a single line of text, meaning someone could fill that in every single time. But as you can expect, there's only two particular choices, and that can be both a time drain for someone to type in every time, and also a consistency problem if someone has a typo. So I'm gonna go ahead and select choice for this particular column, and then select next. 
Now inside of this column to the right, I can give it a name, a description, and also the values in the choice field. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in those right now. Now if all of those input, we can actually see we've got web and social. Now we can also change the colors. So when someone fills this in the future, they won't see blue or green for web or social. By clicking on the little color palette icon, you can change the actual choice color itself. But I'm quite happy with these as options, but I don't want choice free. So I can click on the X next to choice free to remove that from that field. And also, can other people add values manually? Well, my answer to that is gonna be no. We only want either of those two values set. Now, if we click on the more options under that as well, we actually see we can require that this column contains a value. In other words, it's now gonna be required when we input one of these rows of data. So I'm gonna set that to a yes and then click on save. And there we have it. We now have category. If we go ahead and test that by clicking the new button, we can now see trend name and in the drop down, we have the category will be web or social. So as you can see, we're already beginning to build out our list actually with the information I require and make it easy to get it completed by one of your colleagues. The one I'm gonna go and do is add additional columns using that exact same logic so we can begin to build out this list of data. Hey, there's no need to adjust your YouTube sets. I'm just quickly here to let you know that we have a great Microsoft 365 ebook that you can download today for absolutely free. Yes, no money is required. If you'd like to get a hold of that ebook, you'd head to the link, which is down here somewhere. Alternatively, you can head it into a video description and sign up via that link. And we'll send that ebook straight over to you as a thank you for being involved and being part of this great community. Not only that, when you download that ebook, you get access a weekly newsletter where we share all the best video tutorials that we have every single week to help you become more productive and become a productivity superstar. And there we have it. I've added a few more columns using the exact same capability we've just saw. All I did is click on add column, choose a column type, give it a name, and off we go. Now if all of these completed, we can actually begin filling this in. Click on the new button and you actually see I can begin setting the trend name and so forth. So let's go ahead and add in one of these trends. And there we have it. We've just very simply filled in this form and with it all completed, I could go ahead and click on save. And much like any other app you've used when it comes to storing tables or rows of data, we can see it presented in this way. Very simple and easy to do. I'm gonna go ahead and add a few more different rows of data, to show you some additional capability inside the Microsoft list. And there we have it, three rows of data inside of our Microsoft list. And what it does mean is that you and your colleagues can easily click into any of these rows of data and make changes to it live through Microsoft Teams. This will sync straight back into Microsoft lists and all of those changes will then appear for anyone that are using that list in real time. Not only that, if we go back to the list here, we can also very simply sort and filter on data directly inside of Microsoft Teams. For example, I might only be interested in here of actually seeing the information for the web. So I could either do a filter by, and I could filter for web and click apply to only see those web values inside of our list of data. Alternatively, I could actually remove the filter and instead do a grouping. So very easy then to group them by the category for very simple access as your list grows of all of your data. And the benefit of course here is right inside of your Microsoft team next to your posts and files tab, will there be this social trends list, meaning quick access in one single app without going anywhere near the web experience. But you may be wondering what happens if you already created a list inside of SharePoint or you wanted to create it in SharePoint and then have it connected into lists later. We can answer both of those questions pretty easy for you now. Now here I am inside of the SharePoint site for this particular team I'm working in. Now if you're not sure how to get into SharePoint, there's a very quick way you can do so for your particular team. If we head back into the Teams app and head into the Files tab, you'll see an option then at the top that says Open in SharePoint. When you click on Open in SharePoint, it will then open this actual SharePoint site inside of a web browser tab and all of the components you'll be able to see really easily. For example, click on site contents to the left and then you'll see the social trends list we've just created in the first half of this video directly through the SharePoint interface. But in the same way, what we can also do 
is go back to site contents and either create ourselves a new list or connect one inside of Teams that we already had created in SharePoint. So we'll take it from the former point. Let's go ahead and firstly create a new list directly in SharePoint that won't be shown in Microsoft Teams and then connect it into Teams to show you how easy that is as well. So in here, we can now select again from a template or an Excel file or create something brand new. Now, what I'm not gonna do here is create one blank and create it right from scratch as we've seen how easy it is to do that, including all of the columns. Instead, let's go ahead and select issue tracker. And we're gonna create this from a Microsoft template. So let's select use template, give it a name and then click on create. Now what we'll then end up with is a Microsoft list with predetermined columns of data from the Microsoft template. Here I could click on new and I can see I can go ahead and add issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new issue into this list. So there we have it, we have a row of data in this list and of course I could continue to work in SharePoint on this, but we know what we want to do, right? Bring it into Teams. So let's head back into the Microsoft Teams desktop app and we're still within that team we're working with originally. Now as a list exists in this site and in this team I'm working with, all we need to do is click on the plus icon at the top of the screen, once again selecting add as a tab and then selecting a list icon. Now in this dialog here, we can once again click on save. This time however, we're not gonna be creating a new list, we're rather gonna be adding an existing list. So select that item there and we can now see if you had a SharePoint link maybe to another list from another site you want to bring in there, or you can select one that already exists inside of the SharePoint site connected into your team. Here is the issue tracker that we've just created. Select issue tracker, and you'll now see that the Microsoft Teams desktop app will connect that into Teams. The same capability once again exists as we saw on our social trends list. But that's how easy we can bring in a Microsoft list that already exists in SharePoint whether that be in your own SharePoint site connected to the team or somewhere else where people had access to. Add the list in there as a tab, connect it to your data, and once again, we can directly click into Teams and have exactly the same experience. So super easy to bring in Microsoft lists into your team, either creating something brand new or bringing it in on an existing team. And there we have it folks, as easy as that, bringing a SharePoint list into Teams you've already created or creating one right from scratch and even creating those additional columns to make it work for you and your team. So if you like this video, we'd love it, hit that like button, but even better, subscribe to this channel to find more great content like this every week. But not only that, you even can download our free Microsoft 365 ebook to pick up even more tips and tricks, gaining you access to our weekly newsletter with more content just like this. And thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.